Are you and your spouse moving to Texas and one of you has your new job figured out but the other one doesn't? Stick around, this video is for you. Hey, what's up everybody? Brian McCauley, your mortgage expert here. So this is part two of the relocation video. So, so many times I am talking to clients right now where a husband and a wife, two partners, two spouses are moving and relocating to Texas and getting a home loan and one of them has their job situation figured out, but the other one doesn't. This gets a little bit tricky. I want you to listen up because I'm gonna walk through this as much as I can. For an example, let's say you have two people just for the purpose of this video, husband and wife. Husband already has either a new job, a relocation package, or a remote letter or something for his current employer. Income's not changing, not going away, everything is good. Uh, but this person's partner, spouse, or wife says, well, I'm in the process of working out the situation with my current employer. Like, I can't get you a reload agreement right now. I don't know if my income's gonna go down. It's probably gonna be about two or three months before we can figure it out. But you know, we're looking to move it to Texas right now. So this is always where we have to tap the brakes and say, okay, this is how guidelines work around this. If one person is got their ducks in a row and they're all buttoned up, the other person doesn't and we need both sets of income, what happens is, is that other person, I call it like a trailing spouse, has to hang back. Both people go on the loan. The primary borrower, the one that's got all their employment and everything squared away, goes on as the primary person. We get their income, get everything squared away, all good. The partner or the spouse hangs back and they're what's called a non-occupying co-bar, which means right now they're not gonna occupy the property as their primary. Because they're not gonna occupy it as their primary and they're unsure about their employment situation for the foreseeable future, two things have to happen. Number one, we can give that person their income because they're staying back for a period of time. That part is okay. We don't have to dig into the income component too, too much of it because obviously they're staying back. Who knows if it's gonna be three months, six months, or a year. That is not discovered yet through their employer, so that part is okay. The biggest kicker on this is that what is that person gonna do for housing? That's the most important piece. Why? Not because we care about what they're gonna do for housing. Really, we care about the housing expense. So let's say husband coming to Dallas, does his thing, wife or partners hanging back, we have to use that income. Well, what are they gonna do for their housing? So let's say they're gonna stay in the current apartment, or let's say they're gonna stay in their current house, right? We have to figure out what that housing expense is, and now, because they're not departing that current place and it's not going away, we have to count that additional housing expense against them. So as long as the person that's coming here and the person that's hanging back qualifies with both the future housing expense for the new mortgage and the current housing expense, whether that be an apartment, a current mortgage, everything else is fine. Sometimes what we find is that these spouses or partners that are hanging back will end up staying back and living rent free with family or friends. So there's no actual housing expense associated with what they're doing and what they're staying for that period of time. So in that scenario, we have to get a signed and dated letter, both from the trailing spouse, but also from the individual or individuals that they're going to be living rent free with. It's called a rent free letter. To whom it may concern, I, Daffy Duck, am hanging out for the foreseeable future. I'm gonna be living at 123 Main Street rent free. This person would sign it the landlord, tenant, or family member, or friend, or whatever would sign it. And therefore, because they don't have an additional housing expense at that point in time, everything's fine from a zero perspective. But it all depends on what that person is going to do because they're hanging back. They have to live somewhere, and 99% of the time they have a housing expense. So whatever that housing expense is, we must count that against them to qualify for the home loan. So as long as they qualify with all of that, everything is good. There are a couple components, some pieces of it. If you guys are interested in more, obviously I'll be happy to discuss that with you on the phone. But this is kind of the framework on how that happens when one person has their employment set up, the other person doesn't, they're hanging back and we're not sure if it's gonna carry over or when it's gonna carry over or if it does, if it's going to change. These are the dynamics and the guidelines around it. So hopefully that helped. Listen, if you found this video useful or helpful, do me a favor, like it. Uh, but at the same time, subscribe, right? I'm trying to give you as many tips and tricks as I can so you can be the first one to know about the mortgage, housing, and financial guidelines. And if you've got questions regarding your specific relocation scenario, do me a favor, leave me a comment here. And of course, we're always here to help. If you need to have a deeper conversation about your current housing or mortgage situation, do me a favor, text us, call us, email us, set up a consultation. We're always here to help. In the meantime, stay tuned.